Uh, let us begin today's lecture by uh, recalling that we have been looking at the concept of uh, limit of a function at a point. We have seen what the definitions of limit of a function at a point and we have seen uh, the concept of left limit and the right limit and we have seen examples of uh, functions and techniques of computing limits. Today we will uh, start with uh, looking at some more uh, theorems in uh, calculus uh, which are useful in computing the concept of limit. We will not prove these theorems um, because they require more of uh, analysis, but we will treat them as uh, uh, tools for computing limits. So, let me uh, st state uh, the first one which is called the algebra of limits. Uh, algebra of limits uh, for functions is very much similar to algebra of limits for sequences. So, let us uh, look at that. Suppose f and g are two functions defined in a domain D in R and c is a point in R such that the limit of f x, x going to c of f exists and is L and limit of uh, g x going to c, this should be uh, x is equal to m. So, limit of f x is equal to capital L and limit of g x, x going to c uh, is capital M. So, limit of both f and g exists as x goes to c, one is L and other is m. So, this is given to us. So, then the following hold, the first result says, if I add the two functions, if I look at f x plus g x, that is the sum of the two functions and then take its limit that also exists and is equal to L plus M. So, the sum of the limits is equal to limits of the sum. The second result says that if I multiply a function by alpha, so if I look at alpha times f x that also exists and the limit is equal to alpha times x. So, a scalar multiple of the function its limit exists and is equal to the scalar, same scalar multiple of the corresponding limit. So, as a consequence of this, if I take alpha equal to minus 1, then the limit x going to c of minus f x will be equal to minus l. Okay? And that can be combined with the earlier result uh, to say that limit of uh, f x minus g x will be equal to l minus l, l minus m. Right. And the third thing is, uh, we are looking at the product of the two functions, product of f with g. So, it is defined as f x into g x, limit of the product also exists and is equal to the product of the limits that is L m. So, limit of the sum is equal to sum of the limits, limits of the scalar multiple is equal to scalar multiple of the limit and limit of the product of the functions is equal to product of the limits. And finally, if this m is not 0, then I can divide by that. So, it says that if m is not equal to 0, then f x by g x is defined for all points sufficiently close to c. So, you can find the limit, limit x going to c of f x by g x exists and also equals to uh, the quotient of the corresponding. So, limits of the quotient, whenever uh, the limit of the quotient is not 0, is equal to the quotient of the limits. So, these uh, results are very much uh, similar to the results for the algebra of sequences. Once again, algebra means I am just adding scalar multiple, multiplying or dividing so on. So, these results are very useful in uh, computing limits of uh, slightly more complicated functions. So, maybe we should look at an example. For example, if I look at the function 3 x square plus 2 x plus 2 for x belonging to R. So, this is a function, it is denoted by this Greek letter phi. So, phi is a Greek letter. So, phi is a function defined on whole of real line and phi of x is equal to 3 times x square plus 2 x plus 2. So, we can think of as a, a sum of uh, 3 functions. So, one can define, we want to know what is the limit of this as x goes to 2, does it exist or not. So, to do that, let us break this function into phi into three parts. First part will be f f 1 which is this, second part is 2 x and third part is yeah, constant function 2. So, we can write phi x equal to phi 1 x 
plus uh, f 2 x plus f 3 x for every x where what is f 1? f 1 of x is equal to 3 x square. So, this part is called f 1, f 2 is equal to 2 x and f 3 is equal to the constant function 2. So, we can write then your function uh, phi. Okay. So, phi is equal to phi, uh, f 1 plus f 2 plus f 3. Where. So, uh, how will you use that algebra of limits? Because phi is the sum of these three functions and I want to find out what is the limit of phi x as x goes to 2. So, we will find out the limit of f 1 as x goes to 2, limit of f 2 as x goes to 2, limit of f 3 as x goes to 2 and using the algebra of limits we will add up those limits. So, let us do that. So, uh, limit of f 3 as x goes to 2 is equal to 2 because f 3 is the constant function right. So, every value is equal to 2. So, the limit also will be equal to 2 right. For a constant function the limit at every point exists and is equal to the same constant right because if I put x n then f of f 3 of x n is equal to 2 constant sequence which will converge to 2. So, the limit of uh, uh, f 3 as x goes to 2 exists. What is the limit of f 2 as x goes to 2? Limit of f 2 of x is limit of 2 x. Now, using the algebra of limits th treat this as alpha times f. So, 2 comes out. So, it is 2 times limit of x as x goes to 2. So, that is equal to 4. And similarly, for the f 1 limit of f 1 as x goes to 2 is limit of 3 x square right as x goes to 2. So, once again alpha f. So, 3 comes out. So, it is 3 times limit of x square, but 3 times limit of x square is equal to 3 times limit of x the whole thing raised to power 2. So, that is equal to 4. So, that is equal to 12. So, let us write this using limit theorems limit of f 2 x is equal to 2 times x. So, that is equal to 4 and limit of f 1 x is limit of x going to 2 f of x square and is not 3 there is 1. So, that is 3 times limit of 3 x square and that is equal to 4 times. So, that is equal to 12. There is a typo again here this 3 is not required. Okay. So, that is equal to 12. So, basically there is how algebra of limits is uh, applied. So, limit of uh, phi x going to 2 is limit of f 1 plus limit of f 2 plus limit of f 3 and that is equal to 18. So, that is how we will apply the algebra. So, once so we have uh, understood the concept of uh, limit of a function at a point, uh, recall if a function uh, actually takes the what was the concept of limit? Limit was the value of the function that the function is expected to take by looking at its properties at nearby points. So, if a function actually takes the value it is expected to take, then we will say there is a continuity in the behavior of the function. So, this motivates uh, our next concept. So, we define what is called continuity that f be a function from interval a b to r and c is a point in a b. So, for continuity the function should be defined at that point and we say it is continuous at c if limit x going to c of f of x is equal to f of c. So, this is again a typo here. So, let me write this definition because it is definition let me write it very clearly. So, what is continuity? So, f is a function defined on interval a b to r, c is a point in a b. So, we say f is continuous at x is equal to c if 1 limit x going to c f of x exists and second that the limit x going to c f of x this limit should be equal to uh, the value. So, that is f of c that should be f of c. So, this is a concept of limit of a uh, function uh, con, um, con continuity of a function at a point. So, 
the typo here is that limit of x going to c of f of x should be, so this formula should be written properly as limit of f of x, x going to c is equal to f of c. So, let us look at some examples to illustrate this point. So, what we are saying is continuity means the function should be defined at that point, the limit at that point should exist and the limit should be equal to the value of the function at that point. So, that is what is called continuity. There is a continuity in the behavior, what you expect the function to do, it is actually doing it. You predict looking at the values nearby, it should be equal to some value and that should value should be the taken by the function. All constant functions are continuous because the values do not change, so there is no problem. All linear functions are continuous, so let us see why all linear functions are continuous. So, let us take a linear function. So, what is a linear function? So, f of x is equal to say a x plus b, x belonging to r. So, that is what we called as a linear function, right. So, domain is the whole real line and the formula is. So, what is limit of f x? x going to c. So, that will be equal to limit x going to c of a x plus b and that is equal to by the algebra of limits, it is limit x going to c of a x plus limit x going to c of b and that we know by algebra of limits that is a times limit x going to c of x plus there is no x here is a constant function, so that is equal to b. So, it is a times x going to c, so that is a c plus b and a c plus b is precisely equal to f at c. When you put x is equal to c, that is a c plus b. So, that implies that the linear function is continuous at every point. In fact, we can uh, by the same logic, we can go a step further and say that every uh, for example, a, a quadratic is a continuous function. So, f of x if I take it is equal to a x square plus b x plus c x belonging to r, then limit x going to c of f of x will be equal to limit x going to c of a x square plus b x plus c and uh, now we can apply algebra of limits that is a times limit x going to c of x square plus b times limit x going to c of x plus c times limit x going to c of ok. There are, this is a confusion, so let me change this c and to something else because the same c is appearing, same appearing. So, one should be careful in, in notations, so let us call it as d. So, limit of this d, so then this is limit of d. So, that will be equal to a x square x going to c, so that is a c square plus x going to c, so that is b c plus c times d and that is same as right. Uh, so, there is uh, there is no c here, ok. There is limit x going to c of d, so that is equal to d only right. So, that is d. So, third term is limit of d. So, that is equal to f at c again a x square a c square plus b c plus d a c square plus b c plus d. So, that is true and that is also true for a general uh, function. So, we can uh, write that all polynomial functions are continuous. So, what is a polynomial function? A polynomial function is we looked at quadratic, we can look at a third degree uh, a and so on. So, a equation of the type a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d is normally called a cubic and similarly fourth degree and so on. So, in general you will have say a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus so on plus a 1 x plus a uh, 0 you can call. So, such a thing is called a polynomial 
of degree n provided a n provided this coefficient a n is not equal to 0. Right? So, a n is called the coefficient of x to the power n, a n minus 1 is called the coefficient of x to the power n minus 1 and so on. So, these are the coefficients. So, this is what is called a polynomial p x normally written as p x and a n's are called a n a n they are called coefficients. So, a n should not be equal to 0 because if it is 0 then it starts only with power n minus 1. So, to say it is a polynomial of degree n the leading coefficient a n should not be equal to 0. So, all these are uh, continuous functions because x to the power n is continuous by multiplying the function f x equal to x n times limit is same. So, by algebra of limits all polynomial functions are continuous functions. So, we will not uh, go uh, very rigorously into this, but all continuous functions are. Next, we would like to describe when a function is not continuous at a point, what does that mean? So, we say a point x is equal to c, where f is not continuous is called a point of discontinuity of the function. A point of course, should be in the domain of the function. A point x equal to c in the domain of the function is set a point of discontinuity if f is not continuous at a point. So, if a function is not continuous at a point, then that point is called a point of discontinuity. So, um, let us look at uh, what does discontinuity mean? Discontinuity mean essentially that there is a break in the graph of the function. Uh, we will try to make this uh, statement more precise uh, soon. Uh, let us see uh, what does it mean. So, we will describe various types of discontinuities. When you say a function is not continuous at a point, that means what? So, let us uh, look at uh, what does means. So, f not continuous. at x is equal to c. So, that means what? One possibility is right that limit of x going to c f of x does not exist. That is one possibility. The second is limit x going to c f x exists, but this limit x going to c f x is not equal to the value of the function at that point. So, that is the second possibility, right? Because what was continuity? Continuity said that the limit should exist and should be equal to value of the function at that point. So, the way this cannot, this may not happen, this may break down is one possibility limit does not exist at all. So, no question of saying it is equal to the value of the function, but second possibility is limit exists, but not equal to the value of the function at that point. Now, we will uh, expand uh, this a bit more. So, there are two possibilities for one, the limit does not exist, limit f x does not exists, limit x going to c does not exist. There are two possibilities, one that the left limit or right limit does not exist. So, either the left or the right or both probably do not exist. So, no question of existing the limit, at least one of them should not exist. The other is right, a limit uh, does not exist, both limits exist. So, f of c plus exists, f of c minus exists, but they are not equal. So, that is another possibility. The left limit exists, the right limit exists, but they are not equal, right. So, then also the limit will not exist, right. And of course, the second possibility was. So, these are the various ways a function can be discontinuous at a point. So, let us uh, give them names for each one of them. So, either the left hand limit or the right hand limit or both of them do not exist. Either the left hand limit does not exist 
or the right hand limit does not exist right or both do not exist right such a point is called a point of essential discontinuity so this is called an essential discontinuity when at least one of either the left or the right limit does not exist other possibility is both the left and the right limit at the point x is equal to c exists but are not equal both exist but are not equal so that will also imply that the limit does not exist so the left limit is not equal to the right limit so one says this point this is called a point of jump discontinuity for the function so this is called the jump discontinuity point for the function so this is the point where the left limit exists the right also exists but they are not equal and the difference between the two that is called the jump for the function at that point so left limit exists f of c minus the right exists f of c plus look at the absolute value of that that is called the jump of the function at that point right there is another possibility so what is the possibility left the left limit exists the right limit exists but they are not uh, they are equal but not equal to the value of the function that is another possibility right so that is what is called the removable discontinuity that means what one can redefine if need be one can such a point is called a, a removable discontinuity because essentially means for in this case one can redefine the function to be equal to the common value the left limit at the right limit and one can remove the discontinuity from the function so this is called the removable discontinuity of the function so there are three types of uh, discontinuities one which is called essential that means it cannot be removed because either the left limit does not exist or the right does not exist or both do not exist the second is called the jump discontinuity where the both left and the right limit exists but are not equal so that is called the jump discontinuity and the third is called the removable discontinuity where the left limit is equal to the right limit but not equal to the value of the function at that point so that is called the jump discontinuity right okay uh, that is called the removable discontinuity so uh, before we uh, go into examples let me give you some examples of uh, such functions where such kind of discontinuities can come so uh, let us look at uh, first one we have f of x is equal to so let me call it as 1 over x if x is not equal to 0 and call it 1 if x is equal to 0 so my function is defined as 1 over x if x is not equal to 0 and define equal to 1 if x is equal to 0 right uh, recall we have proved that neither left nor right limit exists for fx at x is equal to 0 because why is that because if x is less than 0 then 1 over x it will be a quantity when x is less than 0 it is a negative quantity and if x is becoming closer and closer to 0 this will go to minus infinity and if x is bigger than 0 then 1 over x is positive and x becoming smaller and smaller that will go to plus infinity so neither the left nor the right limit for this function at this point exists even though function is defined equal to 1 does not matter this is called essential so this is example of a essential discontinuity right so let us look at uh, another example of a function just now we had looked at that example so let us look at an example f of x which was defined equal to plus 1 if x is bigger than 0 and minus 1 if x is less than 0 so let us say bigger than or equal to 0 doesn't matter okay because now where i put it bigger than or equal to 0 then f is a function which is defined from whole real line to real line yeah so the question is is f continuous 
at x is equal to 0. So, let us look at what is the left limit that is f of 0 minus. So, that is if x is less than 0, then the value is minus 1. So, whatever sequence I take less than 0, f of x n will be minus 1. So, this is equal to minus 1. What is the right limit? f of 0 plus when x is bigger than 0 or equal to 0, the value of the function is 1. So, if I take a sequence x n bigger than or equal to 0 and converging to 0, it will converge to 1. So, that is equal to plus 1. So, both left and right limit exist, right. So, f has jump discontinuity. And what is the jump? Jump is equal to f 0 plus minus f 0 minus and that is what is that equal to? So, that is 1 plus 1 that is equal to 2. So, there is a jump of 2 at that point. So, that is jump discontinuity and let us finally, look at an example. So, let us look at f of x. This is a good example uh, we have not discussed this earlier. So, let us look at mod x if x is not equal to 0 and is equal to say 2 if x is equal to 0. Okay. Then for x bigger than 0, what is f of x? That is equal to x and x less than 0, f of x is equal to minus x. So, what is the left limit at 0? left limit at 0 minus will be equal to when um, we approach the point 0 from the left. So, that will be equal to 0 right? and that is also equal to f of 0 plus whether you approach from the left or right the value will be 0. So, the left limit exists, the right limit exists, but so that means the limit x going to 0 of f x exists and is equal to 0, but not equal to f at 0 because that value is equal to 2. But I can forget that value, so it is a removable discontinuity at x is equal to 0. So, this function has a removable discontinuity at the x point 0. So, let me uh, summarize what we have done uh, in today's lecture. We have lo looked at the concept of left limit, right limit uh, and then we looked at uh, the concept of continuity of a function. So, basically for the definition of a limit, existence of a limit, the function need not be defined at that point c, but for continuity of a function at a point x is equal to c, the function should be defined at that point 1. Then second condition, the limit of the function at that point must exist and be equal to the value of the function. And then we looked at uh, how a function can be discontinuous. So, there are three different ways. One, the left limit or the right limit or either of them does not exist. That is called essential discontinuity. Second, when the both left and right exist but are not equal, that will imply that the limit does not exist. So, that is what is called the jump discontinuity. And the third, the left and the right both exist and are equal but not equal to the value of the function that is called the removable discontinuity. So, uh, we have looked at the concepts of limit, we have looked at the concepts of continuous functions for continuity limit is required and we will see now uh, in the next lecture some applications of these concepts of limit and uh, continuity in our subject of uh, economics. Thank you.